So hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's special webinar, the three columns of profitable trading exclusively for JFD brokers. So my name is Jens Klatt. Sorry for uh, being two minutes too late. Um, but the thing is two things. First of all, I'm uh, taking it uh, to the full right now with my system here. So it took uh, enormously long um, to, to uh, get the page loaded here. So that's the first thing. So first I had to, to shut down several uh, tasks here. And um, the other thing is that uh, right now I have to manage a trade. So I'm, I'm short the DAX. Oh, no, I'm not short anymore. Stop that right now. Right in the second I got stopped out here um, for a nice profit of 70 points around, which is which is quite cool. Let's see. Um, I just hope that we are not going aggressively lower from here. So unfortunately, the market didn't push that aggressively uh, through 12,200 points here. So um, let's see how things develop. So um, all in all, I think the, the trade itself was uh, very nice and, and profitable here, even though I have to say, even though I have to say, um, hmm, that looks interesting here. What happened? Ah, ah, okay, I see. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, um, yeah, so um, uh, let's let's just see how things develop here in the DAX. If we, if we make it if we make it to new lows, I just hope that we now turn around and uh, that volatility stays low in the U.S. Uh, um, um, markets here, and that we don't get to see a big move lower. Um, but that's it on the market. So first of all, this is this is, uh, should be purely educational here. So just uh, just to let you know um, what's the reason. Um, and uh, so yeah, let's let's have a look at that um, those three columns here. I consider the the fundament of um, uh, of of profitability in trading on the long term. Um, I held this this presentation here um, already several times, even though um, it's over and over again uh, different from the presentations I, I held already since uh, I usually find new interesting aspects um, and, and current trading examples here to um, um, show certain certain points and make them a little more clearer uh, than they probably are here in this presentation. Um, let's, uh, let's here, first of all, click through the risk disclaimer, and then let's have a look here at the toughest game in the world first. Before we start out with those three um, uh, columns here, I um, want to guide you through um, something which uh, especially beginners probably don't like. So one information, especially those getting started with trading and listen to, listening to me right now or listening to the recording, um, trading is the toughest game in the world. So some of you might say, well, why is this difficult? I mean, we buy low, we sell high. What's difficult about that? Um, it's difficult because there are plenty of guys out there who um, exactly think the same. And those people are opponents, some of the sharpest, smartest, most intelligent, well-informed, most irrational, and also quite often most unethical minds in the world. That's the opponents you face when trading. OK, you are playing against computers which are faster than you can blink with an eye. OK, so the lower you go in the time frame you're trading, the higher the probability that you're trading against someone who's using uh, an algorithm, a computer um, who has definitely an advantage and who is not um, shy of, of taking the best price from you here. And uh, yeah making sure that you don't get hit on your bid or don't get hit on the offer. Um, there are also traders who have way more experience than you have. Um, let's face it. I mean, I, I just I just prepared I, or I just presented to you or I present this webinar to you. And um, I just said, well, I was I was stopped out in the DAX trade. And for me, it's it's not even I'm not getting emotional about this or something. So um, all in all, it, it was a it was a nice profit. Um, and but nevertheless, it's just one 
trade of many trades which will come and one trade after lots of trades here in the past. So I'm doing this over and over again. I'm managing clients' money, for example. So people come to me, giving me their money and say, hey, please make make more out of it. Um, I want to um, 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 profit from your expertise. So this is especially interesting for people who say, hey, I know that it's the toughest game in the world and I need plenty of input here to, um, I need plenty of input to to uh to get started in trading so there's there's huge of knowledge i have to build here and um so even if i take you as a mentor or something a trading coach or whatever um even though here is some of the money i i want to have a diversification right now so um and uh, i the only reason i offer that is mainly due to the fact that that i have this experience that I have a clear game plan I'm following and so a plan which makes it possible for me not getting overall emotional at all so and all the experience I accumulated over the last 10 15 years here in trading over and over again every day um, having a clear game plan brings me in a position that I am that I'm really well positioned when starting out the day every morning so now it's imagine you come out there and you just said hey i just downloaded a, a trading platform here for my broker i just deposited let's say ten thousand euros and now uh let's start i mean what's so what's so difficult about um going going along here somewhere around the lows and then going short here against the highs we're selling out at the highs um and uh so the thing is you have no chance you will have no chance. I'll do everything possible here to make sure that the money from you makes his way it makes its way over to me. That's what it's trading about. So I want to have your money. And you want to have mine. And at the end, it's all about experience. It's about a game plan. It's about having a strategy. It's about mental stability, for example. And um, if you don't have that, or if you have not yet um, come to a state, which we call in trading psychology, um, the, the state of unconscious competence. And it's like, let's say, driving a car here, where you don't have to think about this, but you just sit down in the car and just, just go. Um, um, well, you have plenty of difficulties here to uh, to 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 yeah to, to 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 have a chance in trading in general. That's by the way, for example, let's let's take this uh, to to another uh, um, example here. Some of you might um, might be really interested and, and probably excited about the upcoming fight between uh, MMA fighter Conor McGregor and the boxer Floyd Mayweather. So some of you might say, wow, this is a great event and uh, both are getting huge sums of money and there's a big promo tour right now taking place in the US and everything. But now the thing is, they will box, it, it will be boxing. That's, that's the, that's the uh, sport they will face each other. And I think that Conor McGregor as an MMA fighter, I think he's an awesome fighter and he has strong willingness. He's, I think, emotionally really stable and you have to be a certain character to say, well, what, let's, let's just face it. I have a chance against any opponent in the world. I'm one of the best fighters in the MMA circuit here in the UFC world. So yeah, UFC world. Yes. Um, so why shouldn't I have a chance in boxing? That's the thing. I mean, Floyd Mayweather is probably 10 years older than uh, Conor McGregor, but Floyd Mayweather has never been beaten in boxing. And he's one of the, again, sharpest, smartest, most intelligent, um, and, 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 and well-prepared, uh, tra uh, not traders, but boxers out there. And he has so much experience that Conor McGregor has to really get lucky, let's say, to, to win this fight. That's my personal take out of this. I'm, I haven't analyzed anything, even if he works out really hard right now and everything, but it will be really tough for him since Floyd Merriweather has a lot of experience. The same way the other way around. Just imagine they would uh, stand in an octagon against each other and, and, and there would be a you know, UFC MMA fight here with UFC MMA rules. Do you really think that Floyd Merriweather has a chance against Conor McGregor? Not at all. I mean, he will he will just take him uh, um, and 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 uh, make a knot into him, and then just just uh, just leave him around um, um, in the middle of the ring, and 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 be happy that he just uh, 
yeah, won against a boxer who's who has no real clue how to MMA, UFC, how, how mixed martial arts really works. That's the same thing with trading, and uh, this is where where you have to ex um, where you have to really understand. Well, you have to put in a lot of work, and you have to put in a lot of 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 um. You have to have stamina here and if you don't have this well it will be really really difficult for you to make money the long way in trading um you're playing against funds who have way more money than money than you have just imagine you're you're um you're, you're trying to to uh make money in, in equities let's say small cap stocks or something um you might have a count of 100,000 euros uh nevertheless there's a fund out there is probably trading 10 100 million i mean this is an extreme example there Probably funds out there who are trading small cap stocks, but that's what I want to tell you. They can't influence the market. They are the market if you want. And uh, that's something you have to understand here. It's not just that they have some of the smartest guys in the room and also computers who are faster than you, um, but it's also that they have more money than you. And that's something you have to, to make sure that you understand this. Don't fight against the market, but make sure that you try to position with other traders in their direction, especially if you. Or that's one of the reasons why you have to have deep understanding of the market structure in general. If you don't have this, um, it get it, it will get really really difficult since you're probably always the the latest person in the room who's then buying a certain FX pair or um, 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 index or commodity or whatever. Um, Insider who have more information than you. Did you see Wall Street in 1987? That was with Michael Douglas and Charlie Sheen, but Fox and this role Gordon Gecko. Um, he he at one and and one part of the uh, um, film, um, Gordon Gecko said, "Well, if you're not inside, you're outside." Uh, that's exactly the thing. So FX traders, for example, even though this is my, this is the the uh, deepest and most liquid market in the world, well. If you are a salesperson at a at a big investment bank and you know that there will be a seller at around let's say 4:30 p.m. Um, in Euro USD and who is willing to sell 5 billion uh, Euro USD, well, you know that there will be a big sell order and that you can probably make some money out of this move if you position yourself in front of this um, 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 trade here. Um, so in while while this is not allowed in in, in equity trading here. Um, in, in stocks, um, for example, where this is called front running in FX, it's no big deal. And that was also already described from some um, trader called Bill Lipschutz in a book, Market Wizards, from uh, Jack Schwager, uh, the new Market Wizard. That was the second part, the first part. I highly recommend both books here. Um, for example, and it, that, that could, can, can make the difference. If you if you if you're trading against people who have more information than you, well, then make sure that you make friends with them and don't consider them your enemies. But you want to position yourself in their uh, uh, behind their back and, and try to profit from their momentum they might uh, um, might might see here based on their information. Your broker also very interesting. So why do I work together with JFD brokers? Um, JFD brokers is uh, it's my first choice since um, JFD Brokers does not have a market making license. They are not allowed to take the other side of, of, of my trades here. That's also something which is very interesting and, and crucial for me as a money manager. Just imagine the following. So I just made a trade in the DAX. Let's imagine, um, that's by the way a perfect example uh, since I, I don't have a picture for this right now, but um, my, my stop was hit as at 12,217. And um, that was let's say around 10 minutes ago i wasn't stopped out here but the market turned around at 12116.25 i bet there were several brokers market makers who have stopped me out here on this trade if they took the other side of the trade since they see my order it's not a small order so you can make money again, trading against me in this case and the very interesting thing here is that um, that's one very interesting aspect, especially when talking to clients. So let's imagine the client now calls you as the money manager here and asks, hey, what happened there? Why did we get stopped out here? I didn't see the spike um, um, in another uh, in another market here. So I looked at, at the DAX and it, wasn't, it didn't hit that level. The great thing about JFD Brokers is you have a post-trade transparency report. So there's not just that they do not have a market making license, but it's also that they offer you the chance to see what happened with your order in the background. 
So meaning you have the chance to say, hey, when did I get filled? Where did I get filled? Which one, what was the liquidity provider, for example? Um, how fast did my order go through here? All these details. You can get a rebirth on this. Um, and it doesn't depend on your account size. You can get this um, even if you're just having a 500 euro account. And that's something which is um, uh, very important, not just for me as a money manager, but also for traders, retail, classic retail traders who say, hey, um, I want to, to have fair market conditions. I want to have transparency. And uh, if now just imagine you're not just trading against other people who are more experienced than you and, and who are um, having more money than you and um, who are very smart. But on top of that, you're also trading against your broker. All this goes against your so-called expected value. And it can turn a profitable trading approach into a negative one. If you're trading in the wrong market environment, if you're trading with the wrong broker, all this is very, very important and, and you shouldn't forget about this. And also yourself, something very important here. You're in a voice trying to manipulate you. So um, not going crazy, not going berserk here. Um, or let's put it another way. Um, if you can handle, if you can manage the guy in the mirror, you will definitely make more money. I'm not saying you will make money, but you will make more money or lose less than you're currently making or currently um, I'm losing if you can handle the guy in the mirror better. Um, and um, the thing is, do you have a game plan? That's the question I was talking about right at the beginning. So I can hold this webinar here even though I just got stopped out, out of position. I, I just don't even care about this anymore. I had to look up the numbers now to, to write them down in my trading journal um, because it's one trade of a lot of trades here. Um, I, I usually do. And uh, if you have a game plan, if you know you're trading with a positive expected value, then, well, everything's fine. But if you do not know your game plan and if you do not know in which columns profitable trading is built on well only thing i can say is good luck that's all i can say since uh, chances that you come out ahead here um are ridiculously low and that you will make money once again there are other people out there it's a zero-sum game somebody wins somebody loses and uh the thing is if you're not on the side of the winners well you're definitely on the side of the losers and that's something you really have to understand so now let's look at the three columns of profitable trading so these are the three columns and it's not that big surprise that is risk of money management that's trading psychology and that it's strategy with an advantage you have to trade with so that's exactly what i was just um, referring to when i was talking about the positive expected value so if you have a big data set and you really know what to do you take the data you trade it in the in the past and you just see whether it worked out or not so it's similar to let's say let's see whether it works that when i'm selling ice cream at the beach in the summer Okay, it will work definitely. But the thing is, the question is, will you come out well ahead so that you can live from this, or do you have to do something else? Do you have a solid, solid game plan which stands on a solid financial um, and fundament here, mainly based on risk and money management? And um, so, if you if you have this, well, what about trading psychology? Can you handle the swings in the equity curve? Are you capable of doing that? or not, uh, probably your, your um, strategy with an advantage says, well, you have an advantage which makes it possible to trade a position, let's say 3% of your trading equity, since, I don't know, you're using, for example, the Kelly criterion here to, uh, to have an optimal equity growth and you don't care about drawdowns. Well, at least you care, I can tell you that. Um, and this will be the moment when you say, what, I shall risk 3% of my trading equity here? Really? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what you should do. And the thing now is, if you can't handle this from a mental perspective and, and you tend to, to um, uh, take and grab winners um, 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 very fast while letting losing trades run, since you say, once the market moves against you, I can't handle this, it's, it's too much money I'm losing here. Well, you have definitely a big, big problem. And um, that already shows that all these three columns obviously interact very strong with each other and they depend on each other and that's something i just want to present to you so is one column missing well it seems as if these stand independently they nevertheless interact really strong with each other so if a trader fails to succeed in one area it doesn't must it in detail um, the chances of being profitable in trading are nearly close to zero that's that's what i want to say here 
and um, one sec. So, and um, so now, let's have a look at some examples of the different col columns interacting with each other. So, for example, risk and money management, trading psychology. In fact, really easy and very obvious. The working, respectively trading with an adequate position size has consequences on the mental stability of the trader. So that makes perfect sense since a position size which is far too big will lead to a behavior of fast profit taking and letting losing trades run. Easy. So trading psychology, for example, and trading an advantage trading strategy. Um, changing the strategy, for example, over and over again, especially after seeing a series of losing trades, that's that's one fair reason. Just imagine that um, um, you you just found out about a trading strategy, or someone. Let's say let's say you come to me and you say, Hey, Jens, do you have a trading strategy which is profit, profitable? Yes, sure, I have. I have plenty of them. In fact, I have. It's no no joke. So it's not just one strategy, but I have plenty of profitable trading strategies. I can easily show them to you. Um, if I run them through um, 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 different market environments, that they're still stable, making money, and working well. Um, so I hand it over to you. The strategy, I just say, here, take the strategy and, and trade it yourself. Um, will you profit from it in the long run if you do not know the details about the strategy, but it's just like a black box to you, let's say, a strategy which is uh, which doesn't tell you um, uh, how long losing streaks, for example, take. Well, let's say I'm giving you a strategy which has shown in the past, what I know, that it probably had a series of 10 losing streaks, uh, 10 losing trades in a row. This is no big surprise. It happens. There are strategies where this happens, and it's usual. So while I will keep on trading the strategy here with no big problems, but probably just reduce the position size. Probably I keep it the same since I say, well, it doesn't make a difference here if I reduce the position size or not. Um, you might say, well, I don't believe in that strategy anymore. I don't trust it. And uh, so I, I take another strategy. This is happening over and over again. So you just it's not just that you don't need to come to me for that, but, but this happens over and over again. Just imagine probably the first time you, you wanted to trade, you, you bought a trading book. And um, and uh, um, um, in the trading book, you probably um, became aware of a, let's say, had a shoulder formation or something. And then we are looking for this strategy or strategy for this formation in your chart while, and this is the thing, um, it worked out in the book all the time. You're doing this. Um, you're doing this here for, um, let's say, I don't know, two times, three times. It, w it doesn't work out at all, um, and so you change it, even though it might be profitable. If you run it for a long time and and you know that it works, um, you probably just have to stick to it. And the only thing you have to look for is an adequate risk and money management. Could be that, let, like, let's say, let let put this in another um, um, example here. Let, let's 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 just say, well, you, you really plan to sell ice cream at a beach in the summer, and now it's imagine it's summer, and for example, as here in Berlin, well, we just had three three rainy days in a row, and it's not just rainy days, but it's days it rained from morning. I I opened my eyes, I looked out of the window, I saw the rain pouring against the window, and it went through till the evening and this for three days in a row it's july okay so usually you say hey um usually there should be sun out there and people should be happy and lying at the beach and buy my ice cream so is selling ice cream in the summer a profitable strategy i bet it is nevertheless there are probably rainy days out there that that just happens rainy days happen also in summer and now the thing is you have to still Understand that you're not going broke if if um, 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 if it rains, let's say five five days in a row or something. You're still profitable with your with your business idea, and that's the same with trading, for example. And if you do not have this trust and the confidence in your strategy, well, you will definitely face a lot of problems in the long run with your trading, and. Um, that's one of the reasons, even though I know it's very, very hard, but it's the work you have to put in building a strategy and, 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 and analyzing data series and all this, you have to put this in not just to find out 
what's profitable and what works and what doesn't. But it's also very important here since uh, you have to understand that if you put in all this work, at the end, you will... Yeah, you will have another level of confidence in the strategy since you, you've seen the series of losing trades, for example. And if you have seen, if you have worked out the strategy yourself and, and you know that it's 10 times in a row you can lose here, well, you, it's okay. I mean, you're completely fine with that. Um, you just reduce the position size. Uh, probably you, you, you have some kind, you find some way of, of filtering out this, this, these signals. And even if you don't, find a way to filter them out, you still know if you keep on trading the strategy, um, you know that you will come out ahead in the long run. And this gives you the confidence to just tr trade the strategy. And also here, risk and money management and the trading and advantage trading strategy, for example. So the question is, how big is the advantage of the trading strategy? And based on this information, what's the optimal position size to keep drawn on small while getting to see an optimal growth of the equity curve? So the thing about this is, um, we are not just only trading to uh, make sure that we do not lose our money, even though this is very important. And if you're, um, um, if you, if you, if you don't have any trading capital left anymore, well, you can't trade. That's that's very crucial to understand. So that's the first thing you have to understand when you're trading. You're a risk manager, and you have to preserve preserve what you have. You, you are not allowed to lose all your trading money. So. Trading is a game of losing, in fact. So you have to understand how to lose. If you understand how to lose, you have a very good chance to succeed in the long run. But nevertheless, trading is also a game where you say, hey, there's so much pain I'm going through every day. So I want to see an optimal growth of my equity curve. I want to get as much money out of the market as possible since, um, well, there's a lot of pain I'm going through. So I want to have... A positive result and, and, and hopefully a big positive result here so it's not cool to see to see uh, um, my my equity not growing um, in, an, in, in a great way here so even though I know that I have to preserve what I have still I want to have as much money out of this as possible so this is something where you have to say okay what's the advantage of the strategy and then based on this well Based on this 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 um, um, knowledge, you can then formulate with a deep and good understanding of the risk and money management um, how much you should bet per trade. So now let's have a look at those three columns here. So first of all, which topic does a solid risk and money management plan cover? Um, well, understanding that trading is not about predicting the direction of the market, but it's about mar making rational and intelligent bets. So in fact, um, I just want to show you something to give you a better understanding of this. Um, that's the equity, one second, where do I have it? I think it's here, yes. So, simple strategy. In fact, it didn't generate a, tra um, 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 a signal today since the open range in the S&P was too small. But this is based on a huge number of, of, uh, of data here. Just to give you an idea, this this Excel file where this screenshot was taken from has a size of an astounding 57 megabyte, an Excel file, okay? So you can imagine how much data is in here and which has to be analyzed um, um, to, get, to get such a, such an equity curve here. First of all, I mean, it's great that it's uh, that it's rising, and also to get those numbers here. So now the next thing is, what's the what is the advantage of this trading strategy? Oh, I just found out that I don't have an editor prepared here. So one sec. So let's go here. So let's look at the editor. So now I'll give you already something, which is usually part of of the uh, of the content I'm giving to my students here, and uh, which is by the way here probably no not probably uh, it's the most important formula in trading you have to understand this formula and you have a chance to survive okay it's very easy in fact it's about the expected value but the thing is most people out there say hey I'm profitable trading the markets but what does profitability mean it means having a positive expected value 
most people do not know this this mathematical approach even though i mean some people might say hey uh mathematics is mathematics is not not my my, my favorite task here it wasn't in school and it's still not today even though i want to become a trader well there are definitely some basics you have to understand for example what does profitability mean and it's posit having a positive expected value so what you can do here is you can easily put in those numbers there and you can find out well the expected value let's shorten things up here it's ev it's the average winner which is 108 here you multiply this with 47 percent it's the hit rate you can where is it here the win rate and then you just subtract 0 0.82 it's the average loser here and obviously 53 percent is the losing rate so if you calculate this you get this oh, i'm sorry by the way it's there it should be dots here so you in germany by the way we use commas um if you if you just wondered why why i'm using commas here so but i know in the in the english-speaking world we are using dots so it's obviously positive it's bigger zero what but what does this mean well it means that on average per euro we risk we are making seven cents doesn't look that much. In fact, it's not that much. But now let's suppose the following. Just imagine that you're having a 10,000 euro trading account. Okay, just imagine that. And now we say we risk 1% per trade. So that means, by the way, we're talking about 100 euros risk. Great. So now say you're making seven cents EV is seven cents. That means we make on average seven euros per trade. And in fact, it doesn't matter whether whether we are a winner or whether we are a loser. It doesn't matter. Okay. So this is what expected value is about. It's a purely statistical component. But in the long run, this is what you can expect if you trade this strategy with certain rules and you just follow these rules set of rules and just go with it that means you're making seven euros per trade so now let's have a look here at this number of trades it's 1347 trades this strategy generated seven years back from now so yes seven years so that means if we suppose we have 250 trading days a year Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, no, the other way around. 1,347. We um, divide it by uh, 7. And since it's not really uh, November right now, we can, we can uh, round this up to 200 trades per year. 200 trades per year with this strategy. Even though it's not sad that, that we do 200, can, could be that we were 190 this year while we made 210 last year but on average it's 200 trades so now you're making seven euros per trade that means you multiply 200 with seven euros okay that makes 1400 euros that means 14 percent per annum that's what you can expect to make with this strategy some might say well this is not great I tell you it is since you uh, it's very easy parameters with this strategy um, so we are not going in details here what the strategy is about but it's the concept behind this just imagine what I just guided you through I mean we, we made several steps here already um, but just imagine that that's that was five minutes now and even though it took years to collect those data or you can you can find these um, on, on several portals out there but to run such a back test here to formulate the training strategy itself and everything uh, this takes a lot of time but what i just did was i gave you confidence to trade this strategy since you have everything together you have probably a set of rules i didn't give the rules to you now right now it's a simple strategy you can you can uh, follow this strategy if you're uh, joining me i think next week we'll do a live trading of the u.s market opening um I'll, I'll give the rules then but the thing is um and this is what what this is about you have obviously the possibility now to say hey that's what i can expect 40 percent. so i'm not making 
thousand percent a month here, which is, by the way, ridiculous. And on top of that, what you can also say is, look at this, the maximum drawdown of this strategy here with 1% risk per trade was 17%. Let's suppose you're fine with a 25% drawdown in your personal account. This is already getting very difficult for me as a money manager, since uh, people will say, hey, um, I'm willing to see a drawdown of uh, less than 10%. So this, by the way, means that I have to reduce the risk here by, let's say, uh, half, um, by, 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 by 50%, meaning I'm able to risk 0.5%. This then will lead to um, um, a performance here, which is also below 10%, even though if you're getting, let's say, 7% a year, well, you're making far more um, than you will make here. Well, for example, when, when putting your, your, bank, uh, your, your money in the bank account or in the savings account here. Um, so this is the thing. Um, but you could easily say, I, I'm willing to risk, let's say, 25% here. So what should you do? Well, you could easily increase the risk, let's say, by half a percent, saying I'm risking 1.5% per trade. The drawdowns will be bigger, but the positive uh, equity growth will be even higher than that. You can easily say, hey, let's, let's, let's put this up to 10%. This is now getting ridiculous. But you can see here with these numbers and with a solid understanding of risk and money management, what you, what you get is confidence in your trading. It's, it's big, 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 big confidence. And this is exactly what I was referring to here when I said that risk and money management and trading psychology, they play such a crucial role with each other. And as does, for example, risk and money management and trading and advantage trading strategy. So I just presented to you um, the equity curve of an advantage trading strategy here. So, and, and, and you can see that those components play with each other. And you have to understand all of them and go in detail here. So it's not just about saying, hey, I understand that I just risk 1% per trade, but you have to understand why risk 1% per trade. And you have to, uh, to ask a question, does it make sense to risk 1%? Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it makes sense to risk 1.5% per trade. Well, sometimes it does make more sense to risk just 0.5% per trade. But just say, in general, 1% per trade, is not what you should look for and what you won't look for if you really understand what risk and money management is about. So here, answering the question, risk and money management answers the question what profitability means. And that's already something I introduced to you, trading an easy duplicable, duplicable and advantage trading strategy with a positive expected value. That's the formula again. Um, you have to understand that with a decreasing payoff ratio, for example, the chance of hitting the risk of ruin increases in exponentially. So um, that's also something where I have to say, wow, decreasing payoff ratio, what does this mean? So usually if I go for um, a payoff ratio in my trading of say 2.5 to 3%, trading with such a payoff ratio here, which is around one4 to one, so the payoff ratio, you, you can get this by dividing the average profit through the average loss, it's 1.3, it's 1.3 to one. That's not such a big number here. So 1.3 is you're making on average 1.3 times more than when you're losing one euro, let's say. So you're making one euro 30 on average for every euro you're losing. That's difficult. And uh, nevertheless, the thing is that you can build a certain level of confidence here based on the fact that here, let's call it the basic strategy. The basic strategy is, um, um, is, is positive, has a positive expected value. And that's the reason why the risk of ruin here, the risk of going broke is nearly zero. So now what, what comes in play here um, is the following. So what could be my target? What could be my target in my trading? Um, in fact, I know that I'm, I need, that I really need um, a payoff ratio, which is at least two to one. So what's my target then? Well, I have to optimize this strategy. And that is, by the way, something very great. I already know that the basic strategy is profitable. But what can I do is I can try to increase the payoff ratio, for example, since the hit rate obviously looks as it's um, over a very long term here and over a series of over 1,000 trades, it looks as if the hit rate is nearly 50%, a little less than that. So 
um, it's it's more or less a coin flip if you want. But and this is a component I can I can increase here. What I can make sure is I can try to make the average winner bigger and try to decrease the average loser by smart exit strategies, for example. So this is the next thing you could do. You could you could say, hey, um, if I'm trading this strategy here. What about using, let's say, the parabolic stop and reverse as an exit tool? Um, or let's use super trend indicator or another technique. And that way, trying to be more aggressive when the market moves strongly in your direction and not saying here, well, I'm closing the trade out at uh, the market close. Let's say here in this case, it's around 8 p.m. GMT. So a little before that, since uh, we are entering a very illiquid phase here after 10 p.m. And that could lead to some uh, bad execution results here. I mean, if you're having the right broker, everything should be cool. With JFD, you're fine. But nevertheless, um, um, it's 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 uh, safer to just say, hey, let's say we are closing out here at 7.58 or 7.59. A PM GMT then. So this is what this strategy is based on. You can, but you can try to to increase this. This is, by the way, something which already comes here with this formula around the expected value. So what I just presented to you is an idea of how you can make the average winning trade bigger while decreasing the average losing trade. There's also something very interesting here that I just mentioned. It's obviously very individual some people might say hey i don't care about this i know that the positive expect about the positive expect well so pff, everything's cool i just go with the strategy i'm fine some people are not fine with that and they have to adapt here on top of that it's also well just imagine it's a it's an intraday trading strategy just imagine you're working full-time here um yeah, great. And now you, you plan to day trade the market. You have to really see what, what's driving the markets. That's my personal take of this. And and all this is something which is really individual and something you have to take in mind when formulating your own trading strategy. Not just not just all these risk and money management things here, but it's also and now we're coming already to the next step. It's it's trading psychology. Even though let's let's finish this here. Understanding that the target of the traders to find a trading approach which has, for example, a risk of win of zero. So you have no risk of going broke, which is by the way something you will achieve here. So let me just run this. I, I'll show you something now. Um a tool I hand over to my students. Um where is it? Oh where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh um up 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 oh, I should be here Yeah there we go It's an excellent tool you can by the way uh it's from a, co a guy called Brett Penfold he also already uh, not already he also wrote a great book um, about this compass component here. So accuracy, 47%. Average win loss was 1.31. 1. So you can see that expectancy here is uh, 9%. Let's say we're starting out with a trading capital here and uh, we have a fixed risk here, fixed percentage risk of 1%. That's, by the way, number of units of money you will take is 100 then. Um, and uh, what drawdown are we willing to, to, to accept here? Let's say 100% first. So we start to, to simulate this, and you will see, obviously, it works out over a very, 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 very long series of trades, even though this is getting really difficult here, let's say. So there are times when the market is, is obviously not that great. And what we do here is this Monte Carlo simulation. So we're not going into further details here, but you can already simulate an equity curve here and see that the risk of ruin, obviously, of this strategy is zero. It's zero. You can do this over and over and over again, but you have to take big hits sometimes. So let's say you're capable of taking a risk of ruin of, let's say, 25%. 77% risk of ruin. So you definitely get hit by this. So you will see a capital drawdown, uh, so the drawdown in your equity curve of 25%, 100% sure. Um, you have to already accept this here. So you won't go broke, you won't go broke, but you will have to face such a drawdown here with those numbers. So how can you decrease this? Try to get the average winner to average loser payoff ratio, get this up. If you get this number up, the chances of hitting the risk of ruin here of 25% decreases since, and this is the thing, let's just, just imagine you push this up to, let's say 1.7, okay? It's not easy at all, 
But what you can see here already is that the expectancy is, is rising. So you're making more money on average euro uh, on the average for euros you're risking here. And this is great. So from nine cents up to 27, 27 cents, it's, it's great. It's really great. And the chances of hitting the risk of ruin here is nearly zero. Okay. You can do this over and over and over again. And this is something which already shows, hey, what's the target if you're trading a profitable tra trading strategy? First of all, you have to find it. But if you have it, there some other work will start here. And this all comes with, with the solid knowledge of risk and money management here. So, and uh, yeah, this is the, the main rule. Understanding beside a payoff ratio of less than one, using a too aggressive leverage is one of the main reasons 90% of the traders lose 90% of their trading equity in 90 days. It's not just the too aggressive leverage, but also the fact that they do, just do not have a trading strategy. Okay, that's that's one thing you have to understand. So if you want to become profitable in your trading, have an advantage trading strategy. Therefore, be an expert on risk and money management and be an expert on trading psychology. So. Um, you can easily take a screenshot of this um, 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 since, since uh, you, can, you can think about this a little later um, about this webinar, something you would probably um, uh, have a look at. So just remember here that the increasing your payoff ratio should be one of the main tasks you're looking for if you have a solid understanding of how big the hit rate is. If you can stabilize the hit rate, um, and in the case of strategy I just presented, well, you, you know that there's only the chance to increase the expected value thanks to the um, uh, um, ratio of average winner to average loser. That's the only chance you can you can uh, increase your expected value and your, your profitability. And when you increase the payoff ratio, obviously the risk of ruin drops. That's uh, yeah, that's that's for sure. So now the th second thing is um, trading psychology. Understanding that the target is to reach the mental state of unconscious competence. I've already introduced this. And the trading a profitable approach here out of one's zone, um, and this is one thing here, the zone is the, the um, state where you can optimally perform. Um, and l logically, the question is, okay, how do I get there? How can I get, how can I reach the zone? It's a very individual question you have to answer here. We, also here, we can't go into too much details here since we just have, in this case, nine minutes left. But um, in fact, the, the easy answer is practice, practice, practice. This is how you get in the state of unconscious competence and how, especially if you, how you can build um, a high level of confidence in your, in your trading um, in general um, and in yourself, in your abilities to trade. And also understand that emotions trading are not necessarily something bad. So how many times did you come over someone just telling you, hey, if you get emotional in your trading, well, you're, you're done. Um, the thing is, it's not true. It's just not true, um, since there are emotions which um, will have a positive impact on your trading and which you should preserve while there are several emotions which have a bad impact on your trading. So probably those emotions are right now in the majority, so you have to get rid of them. Um, nevertheless, there are emotions which are positive here. And uh, the target is to master, as already said, to master those emotions which are resulting in being unprofitable while facilitate those who support your target of being more profitable. Um, and then understanding that you need to know and understand yourself really well if you want to become profitable with your trading. The first step here is creating a psychological profile, trading psychological profile, but also formulating a strategy, which are, I already presented to you, which corresponds with your personality and helps to tranquilize your inner voice, which tries to sabotage you while getting into your zone and staying there. One possible technique here is, for, for example, something I call inducing rationality. That's like, first of all, you deep, breathe in and then you say okay what did what what just happened here and then you start to to um you start to bring some distance between the bad um thing which just happened to you and uh and you and yourself and um and then you start to wonder okay what went wrong everything fine or not did i go with my trading plan didn't I? What went wrong? Why didn't I move with my with my trading plan, for example, and so on and so on and so on. But you all you just can do all this if you have a trading prof um, um, strategy and a profitable one, uh, some uh, strategy where you know it's profitable here. Um, also here chart for a better understanding. By the way, that's 
I just forgot to, to rewrite this. So it's the, the, the column trading psychology. So emotions are essential. Yes, positive emotions which support you will fight those which encumber you. And here is the zone. By the way, one second, please. Uh, I, I just found out that I can easily present this to you in German. So please, please wait a second. I, I already prepared the chart for this. But I forgot to include it here. Um, so, where is it? So here are some charts I prepared from German, but also um, into English. Where is it? Here. No, 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 no. One sec. Um, let look, let's look at this. One second. So where is... I do it that way. Um, click. So here it is. So... Um, It's a great, great way to understand what I was just talking about, especially in terms of emotions, which are important here to reach the zone. So just you may just just look at this. If the arousal is too low, um, you're yeah, you're definitely performing bad. So some people need emotion, definitely need emotions um, to 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 reach this level. We all need emotions to reach this level of the zone. That's why. Someone telling you emotions and trading are bad is just not telling you the truth since emotions are important. Even if you're trading a purely systematic approach here, does mean that you still need emotions here. Still, somehow, you, you find your emotions in the way you trade if you want. So, and, and that's something which you, which you have to always remember here. So this, this, this uh, jerks, dots, and curve here is really great. And what you have to avoid is to fall here down on the right side. If you if you do this, you'll you start to forget what you just know, and you will make mistakes through leaving the state of unconscious uh, of conscious competence in this case. And decision making is just based on all unconscious competence. If right now you just do not know unconsciously that putting a stop is important, you will definitely not put a stop if you here on the right side, um, if you're falling down here on the right side, and if you're getting stressed, really stressed. Um, in my case, for example, I'm trading for such a long period of time that even if I'm not, and this is, by the way, something I should avoid to trade then, and I avoid it already. But nevertheless, um, what I what I found out is that I don't really need to concentrate uh, to place a stop. I just place a stop. It's just natural to me. It's it's part of of the overall um, um, overall um, 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 process here. And even if I'm not not focusing aggressively on trading here. I don't need to. It's similar to to driving a car, for example. So how? Just imagine the first time you you um, had to to drive a car, and 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 you were in the driving school here, and how how focused you were, and how um, disciplined you had to be, and to to really um, um, really focus on on what to do next. So um, 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 breaking, let's say. Uh, then talking to the to the to the uh, um, uh, driving coach here, then uh, look in the mirror, all these things, and you had to really concentrate on. So if you if you sit down in a car today, it's just like as as if you're breathing in, breathing out. If you're walking around a little, it's it's nothing. You can do plenty of things in 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 the in the meantime here without really using the focus on uh, uh on, on driving the car and not causing an accident here it's the same with trading and um, this is the thing why you have to avoid here to fall on the right side um down on the right side and 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 um, exit the zone here on the right side so and uh now the advantage trading strategy. This is the the last um, slide I just want to pre present to you here. So what does it mean to have an advantage trading strategy? So it means that you have 
uh, trading strategy, which in fact means that you have a positive expected value in your trading. So that even after trading the strategy over a long time frame under different market conditions, so strategy in fact has proved that it worked well under different market conditions, meaning that the trader did not reach the point of ruin here. Um, that's what it what it means when I'm talking about trading an advantage trading strategy. The strategy has to fit the personality, respectively, the character of the trader, which also means it has to fit the life circumstance, the lifestyle. So that means someone working full time, that's already what I said, someone working full time 50 hours a week will very unlikely be able to trade and approach profitability with trades, which generates 50 trades a day, hardcore scalping. Why? Well, just imagine that. I mean, you, you, you have to, 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 you want to trade aggressively and, and, and a few times a day. But let's let's face it. How how do you plan to do this? If you're if you have to focus on your kids, um, if you have to focus on your in your family, if you have to focus on your work, on your on your job, um, um, on whatever. So do you really think you can you can trade such a strategy? That's it's such an important question. There's so many people coming to me and saying, Hey Jens, I want to scalp the markets. It's great. Yes, awesome. Um, and then every broker will be really happy to, to have you as a trader since the more you trade, the more commissions you generate, the more commissions you generate, the more money the, the broker makes. And what the broker, a really great broker like JFD Brokers wants is you to be profitable since the more you trade, the more commissions you generate and the more profitable you are, the more you will trade. <laughs> you see? And that's a win-win situation. That's great. Now, the thing is only, well, does it fit your lifestyle? Did you ever wonder that? So if you if you want to be a trader, the first thing you have to really understand is who am I? If I don't know who am I, I have big big problem since it will be hard difficult for me to to find out um um what what fits my personality, what's perfect, what 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 fits my 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 style, um and then and that's that's a question you have to answer this and then from there you can start to formulate a trading strategy. And um, so finally, understanding that having a profitable trading strategy also means that a trader is confident and firmly believes in the strategy based on a solid backtest you ran. And we could see that the strategy works in the long run. This is crucial since perfection trading and reaching the state of unconscious competence can just be achieved if the trader keeps on trading it over and over and over again. So first of all, switching strategies here. That's, by the way, the last thing. Uh, it's Bruce Lee who said, I don't fear the man who practices 1,000 kicks one each uh, one time each, but I fear the man who practices one kick a thousand times. Since the latter one here is more likely to be in the um, my, in the in the in the uh, state of unconscious competence here, and that's the same with trading. So if you start to switch position, uh, not positions, um, um, strategies here over and over again, you won't reach this. Um, um, state of unconscious competence and um, that's something you definitely have to understand on top of that nevertheless i could easily now say or you could easily say hey obviously the strategy works you just wait another week you'll get the the um the the components the parameters of the strategy cool i have the strategy i know it works i just trade it the only thing here is again you didn't do it yourself so you don't know how long losing streaks take you don't know how long winning streaks take you don't know what to expect, really. I mean, in terms of, of you, how you react to such a losing streak and how you behave under certain market conditions. And this is something which uh, makes this whole process so difficult um, and, and, and not that easy to achieve, let's say. Um, yeah, and so I just hope that I gave you um, a little insight on, on those three columns of profitable trading. I just hope that you enjoyed the webinar and um, uh, I'd, I'd be really happy to to um, to see you here next week again. So, uh, by the way, I just have a look here. Usually it should be, yes, next week. As I already said, it will be the trading of the U.S. market opening. And it will be based on this strategy I just presented. Let's do this. Um, I will show you to you the, 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 the components of this strategy. In fact, it's very easy. Um, nevertheless, it's hard to go with it in the long run. And uh, so this is something where... Um, yeah, where where you where you should be aware that, that there's a lot of work you have to put in this. Even though if you have the strategy, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will be profitable in the long run. And um, yeah, so have a nice evening. Happy trading. Watch your stops. If you have any questions, just um, contact me via Twitter. So it's Jens Klatt FX. Um, here, 
you can you can just uh, take out here the the free space and put an FX behind this. Um, send me an email yachtclat at jk minus trading dot com. Um, and uh, yeah, I just hope that you that you will join me next week then in trading the U.S. market opening. And um, have a nice evening. As already said, yes, happy trading. Watch your stops. Talk to you next week. I look forward to it. See you and bye bye.